All right, let's do the let's do the whole book of Matthew because I've done passages. I've done a longer passage in Job. I've done Revelation. I've touched on Revelation. I've touched on Psalms. I've touched on Genesis. I've taught, you know, but I'm not cherry picking things. Let's take the whole book of Matthew, the whole book. Now on the left, you'll see the Zodiac wheel and on the right and in the red rings that I've made, it's, it's just to help you follow along. Okay. So Matthew 3, 2, repent of your sins and turn to God for the kingdom of heaven is near. Each gospel begins at one of the four major points of the Zodiac and ends at one of them as well. The two solstices and the two equinoxes when connect form a cross. This is known as the cross of God's son, son. The kingdom of heaven is Leo, whose ruling planet is the sun. This is the only sign that the sun rules over. This is the firmament between Cancer and Leo. Remember we talked about the firmament earlier? Okay, it's the beginning of the kingdom. And there's a saying in the Bible that says the firmament shows God's handiwork. The firmaments are the dividing lines between signs. Now, the next passage, Matthew 3, 4. John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. For food, he ate locusts and wild honey. Well, who wears camel hair clothing and who eats locusts? Right? That seems a little weird. Nobody ever really questions that. But here we go. If we take the most famous drawing of a man, Leonardo da Vinci's Vitruvian man, and superimpose it onto the Zodiac, we can make sense of this. To be honest, SO, I could have just used the picture of you and put it on this. You know, it doesn't even need to be a man, to be honest with you. It's just, it, it's, it's, it's elegant. It's a good look, see? So now cancer being the head is why he eats wild honey. In cancer, there's a star cluster called the beehive cluster. Bees produce honey. Head is in cancer. Mouth is in cancer. Mouth eats the honey. It's just simple. Leviticus 11, what's clean and unclean to eat? All flying insects that walk on all fours are to be regarded as unclean by you. There are, however, some flying insects that walk on all fours that you may eat, those that have jointed legs for hopping on the ground. Of those, you may eat any kind of locust. So there it is. Locust was a food. Katie did cricket or grasshopper. There it is. Now let's talk about, let's go a little lower on the body and find out the camel hair. Little lower on the body is the clothes. And if you see, I've circled Gemini. So the head was cancer and then the upper body would be Gemini, right? Okay. Clothes made out of camel hair or camelopardalis, which is a constellation in Gemini. Okay. So right now you have the head and the upper body so far. Let's keep going. A little lower, now you're in Taurus, the midsection. Okay. You'd wear a belt, the leather belt. Now, Taurus represents the bull and the female is the cow, which is where you get the leather from the cow. Regarding the belt, Orion's belt sits between Taurus and Gemini, okay? Next would be the baptism. Now, how are we gonna go from a water sign to signify the baptism? You would go across the zodiac. Cross signs as they are known are the signs opposite location. For example, Aries and Libra are cross signs. This is very important. I can't drill it into your head enough, SO. You always look for the cross signs and the neighboring signs, okay? Always. Here we see a leap. So here's the firmament that we were at, and then it makes a cut into the Capricorn Aquarius firmament. Now it's at a firmament and it's touching Aquarius. So it could be used to, so a passage realistically now can be talking about water or it could be talking about a goat or a kid okay if you're in the firmament if you're solidly in aquarius it's only talking about the water or the man if you're at the firmament because you're between both you can talk about both now the man with the water pitcher is personified as john the baptist with the water it's important to note too that john the baptist and jesus are already are always exactly six months apart when you think about the fact that Jesus is born on December 25th and rises a degree a day, then that must mean that John the Baptist is born on June 24th and decrease a degree a day. This is why in John 3.30, John says, he must increase, but I must decrease. Okay? So imagine, uh, how do I explain this? These circles that I have here, okay, on the, on the zodiac wheel. One represents Jesus. One represents John. John is June 24th. He's the top one. Okay. Jesus being the bottom one. So as the circle and Aquarius, Jesus, which is uh, December 25th, right? As Jesus starts to climb, so he must fall. Okay. So that's why St. John's day is exactly six months to the day of the birthday of Jesus. They just kind of sneak that in there. <clears throat> Hold on a sec. 
The next story is the temptation of Jesus. So we're going back to the Cancer Leo firmament of July 24th. This is simple. The devil tempts him for 40 days. Count 40 days. This is a calendar. This is a sky clock, remember? Count 40 days. What is 40 days from July 24th? That's September 2nd. That is right in the middle of Virgo, the lady with the wheat stalk, the bread, the corn, all that stuff. What is the very next passage? Matthew 4, 3, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become loaves of bread. Okay? So here we see the mention of the bread, which tells you that the son is in Virgo. Now, the son is in Virgo. The next passage, Matthew 5, 17 and 22, I did not come to abolish the law. And if you are even angry with someone, you are subject to judgment. Okay? Judgment is Libra. Those are connecting signs. Okay? Matthew 7, 15, 16, beware of false prophets who come disguised as harmless sheep. And can you pick grapes from the thorn bushes? The sheep are the rams in Aries and the grapes are in Libra. Once again, these are opposing signs. Matthew 13, later that same day, Jesus left the house and sat beside the lake. The story now moves from Libra to the barrier between Aquarius and Pisces because they said he sat beside the lake. Now, if he was in the lake, he would have been in Pisces, but because he's beside it, he's at the firmament. Do you see how they play with words when they do this? Okay, good. All right. So now, its cross sign is Leo Virgo firmament. So now we can talk about Virgo. As it's across from Virgo, the wheat stalk in the grains, isn't it ironic that Jesus' next parables are the wheat in the weeds, the mustard seed, and the yeast? Moving right along, next is the fishing net parable. So now we go back from Leo Virgo to Aquarius Pisces so that we could talk about the fish, the fishing net parable, the fish which are in Pisces. So you got to follow the patterns in order to be able to understand this. Then Gemini is the sign of two men, technically twins. However, there's just a short mention of brothers in the next passage. He's just the carpenter's son, and we know Mary, his mother, and his brother, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. This ends at the ferment of Gemini cancer. So Gemini is the twins, the brothers, remember? So we're in Gemini, but we can also talk about Gemini if we're at the ferment of Gemini cancer, can't we? Right? Now, how do we know this ends at the Gemini cancer ferment? How do you know that? I'll explain it to you. You follow the firmament. You follow the firmament and go its cross sign. Its cross sign is Sagittarius Capricorn. That's December 21st. That's the last day of Sagittarius. What happens in Sagittarius? It's the death, remember? The death of the sun. What's the very next passage? The very next passage. The very next story is the death of John the Baptist, okay? So as I've mentioned before previously, death comes at the end of Sagittarius. The firmament of Sagittarius Capricorn and the Gemini Cancer are opposing signs. So let's take, this is for people who may be struggling figuring this out. Let's take this sentence, which sounds like it could be in the Bible, but isn't. If I say to you, the rulers were, and I made this up, by the way, this is not biblical. The rulers were divided between war and love. It split the land in half. You could read that as a literal translation. But if you're doing it astrotheologically, the ruling planet of Aries is Mars, who is the god of war. The ruling planet of Libra is Venus, who's the goddess of love. There is your war and love. Those are opposing signs. And if you connect it, as you see here, it literally splits the zodiac or the land in half. So that's how this works. This is how these parables work. Matthew 14, 17, and 32. But we only have five loaves of bread and two fish. The bread and the fish, Pisces and Virgo, are opposing signs. Okay. Also, Pisces is the two fish, which is why Jesus fed the masses with two fish. Now, five loaves of bread. You're probably asking why. Well, I told you the year starts in Aries, right? Well, count five signs from Aries. You get to Virgo. That's why there's five loaves of bread. Okay. This is the cross of God's son, son. We were just in Virgo, and now next is Libra, which is law and wine, remember, and oil. I, should, I forgot oil. Law, wine, and oil. What stories do we get now? The stories of the temple tax, the unforgiving debtor, divorce and marriage, and the parable of the vineyard worker. It, it, it captures all of it. Okay. Jesus literally tells stories based on what's information about each sign. Then next is Scorpio, the betrayer. This is when Judas betrays Jesus with the kiss. So we go from Virgo to Libra, connecting signs, to Scorpio. That's a connecting sign. Then Sagittarius would be next. What happens in Sagittarius? 
It's the death. Here is your Jesus is crucified on the cross. And Esso, my friend, that's that's the book of Matthew in a nutshell. Does it paint a new light on it and how how deeply encoded these people were and how idiotically we are taking this stuff seriously now? I mean, 